All right, everybody. Welcome to another Sunday stream. For those of you who have been showing up regularly for the Causal Inference Book Club, and for all of you that are brand new and coming into the first State Space Model Book Club. As always, this is a home production. So folks, uh, let me know if the webcam and everything's working and the audio is working. I think I figured it out now after the Causal Inference Book Club, but it would be pretty embarrassing to do uh, an hour live stream and realize none of this stuff works. So I see at least the chat works. A lot of uh, familiar folks already, Chad, Julio, and others. I'm so glad to see that you are all here. Uh, and hopefully you see me and the screen as well. I'm gonna wait just a second to see whether that's the case. It looks like I'm live. Does somebody wanna tell me if I am or not? So for those who are new, by the way, just so you know, you're always gonna see these like eight second pauses for me because the live stream is just a little bit delayed from what you folks to see. There's a tiny bit of latency between when I say something and then when it shows up on your end. All good, I got the all clear. Uh, that means we're gonna proceed and go ahead with our usual format. So how we usually do things around here, we'll stick to, at this beginning, a tried and true format, is we're gonna go through the slide sh a slideshow. Um, this just helps provide a visual and a framework for the, uh, the session. So let me start that off. Today we have the kickoff. Uh, we're not going to be covering any particular chapter in general, but just talking about this book club. Another familiar thing, we go through a quote. In this case, I took it from a different book um, than the ones we're going to be using. And I'll go through a little bit of it, but states of eight models are a general model that subsumes a whole class of special cases of interest much in the same way that linear regression does is the state space model. Although the model was primarily used in aerospace related research, the model has been applied to modeling data from economics, medicine, and soil sciences. So this quote is a large reason, uh, and I feel like undersells why I particularly want to learn state space models. And I feel like a lot of you are going to want to learn state space models as well. Linear regression is this model that is a little bit underwhelming, right? You learn it very on, very early on, probably in primary school, but as you learn more and more about statistics, you learn that linear regression is everywhere, uh, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Uh, linear regression is essentially the basis for most neural networks and AI and all these chat GPT things and image GAN things that we're seeing right now. For those of us who are in the causal inference book club, linear regression was everywhere. I don't want to say every model was linear regression, but I, uh, a lot of models boil down to linear regression concepts, and it's how causal inference was performed uh, with you know some extra additions you need to make that causal claim. It's used in uh, finance. I'm pretty sure every company you've ever worked at is going to use linear regression. And in the same way, state-space models, I feel like, are that same thing. I, I had personally seen state-space models when I started my career in outside of statistics in mechanical engineering, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but I just see it coming up over and over again. Every company or application I worked at, there's been some variation of a state space representation that adds, um, there's been some variation of a state space representation that would have been useful or is useful in solving the particular problem I'd like. And recently, I just feel like there has been so much material written on space-based representations, new types of solvers and things coming out. So that's what we're going to get into. And that's why I'm excited about this quote. The other quote that I'll say though is welcome. For some of you, like I said, this is a familiar format. Um, you've seen this many times. I believe you like it. Otherwise you would have told me differently. Uh, but there are many new people uh, hundreds more new people than I, I had expected. This is actually double the size of the Causal Inference Book Club um, sign up. So there are going to be hundreds more of you. And I'm really glad you folks are here and we're going to learn together and, uh, and that you're going to get used to this 
and so you're going to see this many, many times. So let's turn the webcam back on and go through it. Oh, I need to turn it right back off. So another familiar format, uh, the agenda. Today is a bit packed. We're going to be going through a lot of things. So uh, again, a little bit different of an agenda in that we're not going to be covering a particular portion of the book club. Um, we're not going to be talking about a specific chapter, but we're going to be going through the book club as a whole. Uh, and I'm going to be giving you folks a, uh, a tour of the community and doing an optional environment install at the end, because in this book club in particular, uh, the code is really important. It is going to be the focus is going to be the code and not actually the textbook. We'll talk about that in these book clubs uh, and especially these live sessions. But I should say in the book club in general, ask questions at any time. So if you have a question while I'm speaking, post it. If you have a question tomorrow and the live stream is over, go to the discourse and share it there. This really is a community. Um, it should not just be a one way uh, dissemination of, of information from you to, me to you or anything like that. Uh, so we're here to learn together and we learn better when we learn together and for, you know, I think some of the most random or exciting things that we learned in the last book club were from folks sharing things that they brought from, from other sources and adding to a richer experience than just going through a sequence of steps and through the book. So what I encourage you to do is folks to just put some questions in the chat right now. Whatever you have on your mind, throw it in the chat. We'll get to it at regular intervals. But... Um, to make up for the lag, I will continue on with the presentation. So the first thing I want to talk about is why a book club. This book club is really just a casual place to learn. I uh, will talk again more about my background, but uh, others that express this as well, they're, uh, I, don't, I feel like there's, a, there's an avenue for, for folks that want to learn outside of college, outside of things like that, and not in a strict uh on a strict schedule so this is that place we're gonna learn space-based models casually we're here to learn the fundamental statistical concepts uh we're gonna apply these concepts to real world examples maybe they'll be the ones that are in the uh the text maybe there'll be others again as i mentioned we're gonna code and run these models in modern statisticians a large part of the way we do our jobs is through code and a large part of the way you can learn and run these models is through code. So we're going to do that. And uh, in this case, we're going to learn JAX as well. There's a lot of cool technologies that are supporting state space models uh, today. And we want to learn those as well as learning the concepts in the code. And then a big part of it for me is just meeting, meeting new folks. There's so many people doing interesting things all over the place. Um, a lot of you had shared your introductions in the discourse community, and it was great seeing folks from all over the globe talk about how they're working on uh, different, it's just in so many different fields and applications and graduate school and industry and everything like that. So why in particular do we wanna do this? One is I find it fun. It's really enjoyable to go through and learn something new. I find that quite motivating. I won't belie this. Learning state-based models uh, also has to do with at least my work and I think a number of you as well. Uh, these are particularly powerful concepts that have applications over many different industries um, and in a particularly challenging job environment, ha being able to retain your job and stand out or being able to interview and have that edge it's quite an important thing. So this is part of it. And I want to just throw that out there bluntly. For some, uh, depending on where you're at, especially, well, and I'm in this place as well, is to give back. I, uh, I feel like I've been enabled by the knowledge of a lot of people that have put things out there uh, that has helped me in my life. And this book club is another way to do that. Uh, and we'll talk about code contributions to Dynamax in a couple of slides. But this is just a good way to you know, help other people, mentor if you're more advanced with state space models or you know something that others don't. This is a way to help others grow and succeed themselves. And these were the three that were my priors for what the, you know, the bulk of the distribution is. But 
there could be any other reason as well. It doesn't have to fit into one of these categories. Whatever you're here for, again, just share it with us however you feel is best. And we will create, again, this great community to learn this particular concept. Another reason I'm doing another one of these is the Causal Inference Book Club was really good. I uh, We had a number of sessions. We were able to make it through a book together. A, a lot of folks stuck through all the way to the end, and it was just really great uh, going through these sessions together. So a motivating factor to keep this book club going and to come up with this is I thought it was quite fun. And when I asked the folks from the Causal Inference Book Club, they also said we should keep going, and I, I see a number of you here again, so I might as well keep the, the good times rolling. There's plenty of stuff to read. This is a good one, so let's keep going. From the chat, I see a number of you are here again. Theo, welcome from London. I'm glad folks from across the pond in different countries uh, can join. So let's now talk about, whoops. Let's not talk about me. So I will go through a quick introduction about myself. Again, so many new people have signed up. Uh, talking about at least myself will help uh, share my learning journey with you and uh, help frame the book club. And then we're gonna flip back and talk about you. So the first thing I wanna make really clear is I'm not a statistician by training. I have not done uh, a bachelor's master's and I don't even have a PhD in statistics. My statistics journey was completely, oops, self-learned. Um, I learned statistics outside of a traditional college. Uh, there were some small statistics classes. They're like electives that I took in my initial degrees, which I'll talk about in a second. But for a number of reasons, uh, they actually don't use anything that I really learned in those classes these days. Everything I use at work and whatnot, and that we're gonna learn here is done outside of a school setting. So. That's where I'm from. You're going to see that reflected in this in these book clubs quite quite a bit. I'm honestly just to put this out there. I personally am less interested in reading through um, papers and deriving theory, and I'm much more on the applied heavy and uh, intuition side of things. Um, that doesn't mean we can't have those in the book club. We're going to talk about all the contributions you can bring, but if you're looking for a statistics lecture you won't find that flavor here. You're gonna find a very different flavor of education. For me, I started my career in mechanical engineering uh, outside of statistics. My job was to build oil rigs such as, uh, such as these ones. So I used to work in a factory uh, and I would uh, be around people welding things, cutting metal, uh, the, the kind of thing you see in, on like how it's made on, on YouTube. Um, I would my job was to help uh, provide the instructions for how to manufacture parts and then later on how to design the factory that would build these particular oil tools. So this is where I got my start in data science. I was interested not in um, so much the mechanical portion once I had started my work, but I was more interested in the data about the number of parts going through a factory, which parts were failing, why parts were failing, things like that. Didn't know it at the time, but state safe models uh, would have been particularly useful at this job when we when we get to our next session later on uh, in a couple of weeks and we talk about hidden Markov machines and the un, the dishonest casino. I'll talk about how it would have been useful for me at the time at National Oil Well of Arco. I then moved to this company, uh, it's probably more famous. This is SpaceX. I helped build rockets. I helped build this exact rocket that you see here. This was. Uh, the initial launch of Falcon Heavy, and there is a Tesla up at the top of that nose cone, uh, Elon's Roadster. Uh, so I was a supply chain engineer here. My job was to model and understand how parts were flowing in to uh, build these vehicles. There's a lot of parts on these vehicles. Um, there, there was a lot of initial time series forecasting um, that I did at this company to figure out when things were going to come in. Uh, and actually got my start in Bayesian statistics at this particular organization. I've talked about that a lot, so I won't belabor it here, but if anybody has any questions, again, we'll have a session at the end where I answer questions, feel free to ask. All right, we're gonna go this way. Uh, then I had a stint in uh, 
at this company called Sweetgreen, if you live near a major U.S. metropolitan area such as Seattle or New York or Austin or Los Angeles, uh, this is a trendy restaurant. Uh, a lot of folks ask me about this portion of my career, and it's interesting um, in the sense that it's much outside of tech or manufacturing or hard sciences, let's say, like my previous two jobs. But it still had a lot of data, and that's my job. Was my job at, at Sweetgreen a lot of forecasting, machine learning, things like that to try and uh, help minimize food waste, get the right product to the right people at the right time. I always like to tell folks that if the avocado uh, right here or the chicken, which was actually down here, was missing, uh, and people didn't get that, they were really, really unhappy. So we had to be really good about avocado uh, and chicken, making sure those were there. And an interesting tangent. Just a uh, aside, uh, while I was working at Sweetgreen and getting into Bayesian statistics, I actually met Kevin Murphy, who's uh, a big contributor to Dynamax and wrote the book we're going to go over uh, for the first time. And he thought, I didn't really know who he was at the time, um, to be frank. I, again, not coming from a statistician's background, but he he had approached me at a, at a table, was the just the kindest guy, uh, and he found it just so awesome, he, well, funny or awesome or interesting that... Uh, he enjoyed going to Sweetgreen, and he's like, oh, now I know that there's statistics actually in uh, at Sweetgreen. So I'm glad I got to meet him, and it was, I'm glad he got some, <laughs> got some humor out of that. Where I work, oh, I should talk about this. Um, a big part of this, and we're going to, we're, again, we're going to touch on this later, is uh, I'm an open source contributor. So this isn't a job let per se, but... Uh, Open source is incredibly important in the statistics community for a number of reasons. Uh, I'm particularly proud to be a accepted as a core contributor to those two libraries. Um, they're two Bayesian libraries, and those both the community in those libraries, um, the folks who are core contributors, helped me grow and become a better statistician and provided me a lot of learning. And certainly the tools are very useful as well. The fact that there are open tools that you can use to apply statistics is a big enabler um, for the world. So you're gonna see a lot, a lot, a lot of open source themes for me. One of the open source themes is this book club itself. I open learning communities that are incredibly important, um, were incredibly important for me, and it's something, this is my way of giving back. And then certainly um, the tools themselves. Building and developing these tools to enable folks to apply statistics is, is a large part of how statistics spreads and moves forward. And in a bigger sense, it helps provide good decisions and uh, just helps inform better decisions for the world in general. So if there's somebody in the world that is trying to provide emergency disaster relief supplies to the right places, they can use statistics to do that and they don't need to pay for expensive software to do so. If there are folks in um, all variety of settings or countries or anything they like, these open tools make it possible for them to have the latest in statistical technology and knowledge and tools without any barriers or as minimal barriers as possible um, versus the paid software. So we're going to come back to this open source theme in a couple of slides. Right now, I work at Google. Uh, you probably heard of it, you're definitely using their software through right now, both with slides and, uh, and YouTube. Uh, state space models are very useful there. Uh, as you can imagine, I do have to provide the legal disclaimer that this book club is not affiliated with Google and I'm not representing Google right now. And all these opinions are my own. But uh, with that out of the way and my background out of the way, let me talk about uh, you folks. So nothing from the chat right now. Again, I always want to say, feel free to uh, ask your questions. It's actually nice when you ask them ahead of time because then we don't have these awkward pauses later on. So here's my priors about you. Uh, this is both from the last book club and then also from just what you folks responded to in the chat. Uh, these three tenets seem to be why a lot of you folks are here. You'd like to learn, you want the community, and you're applying statistics in uh, some way. Maybe you're doing this at work, maybe you're learning it in your university. Um, let me know how close I was here or if I missed anything, but this is largely what, uh, let me 
this this is largely what I believe a lot of you are looking for and where you're coming from. So uh, hopefully I'm somewhat close and correct. Now there's going to be, in this book club, the topic is different. So the last book club was based on causal inference. A lot of us were looking to use causal inference to be able to better understand causality claims when they come up in various places or at our um, place of work or school, we wanted to be able to do causal inference. Let's say make a causal claim or um, we wanted to be able to, um, for me in particular, let's say understand what others were doing in the causal inference field. Of course, this book is different. We're not doing causal inference now. We're doing state-based models. So what I think my objectives are, or what we should be able to do by the end, is intuitively explain state-based models if, if asked. So if somebody asks us what is a state-based representation, we will be able to articulate that in a manner that's clear and understandable, um, be able to talk through state-based applications. So where can we use state-based models? Where are they the preferable model? Maybe where do they not work the best? Um, we definitely want to be able to write state-based models in code. So because these models can be used in a wide variety of situations, it would be really good to be able to see an application and then write that model in code to be able to, um, to solve that model, solve that problem, let's say, or make a decision on that problem, whether that be inference or parameter estimation or however we want to use that state-based model. And then as we go away from the technical code, let's the technical material state space models, um, as I mentioned, an objective here is to be able to contribute to Dynamax. So I hope that a number of you here uh, by the end of this are contributors to Dynamax, that you are able to help either in minor ways, let's say fixes in documentation or code, or even major ways uh, in writing entire modules for new types of state space models for Dynamax. Um, Dynamax is a library that's put together by, in this case, a relatively small number of people compared to larger open source projects, and it's a newer one. So, you know, helping out and providing functionality um, for everyone else and helping the maintainers is something that I hope uh, at least a couple of us start doing. And the last two I talked about as well, uh, I'm having a bigger network, you know, meeting folks. I uh, In the last book club, Chad and Julio and and uh, this fellow named Bill all met up in Portland. It was quite fantastic. I'm very happy to know a number of folks from the Causal Inference Book Club. And I feel like we're now great colleagues. Um, we want to just continue that here. Uh, and lastly, having references and knowing where to look for stuff is really useful, frankly. Knowing where to look in a book chapter, which, which online PDF was good, which videos. Um, it's just very handy and it's been very handy for me from the Causal Inference Book Club to be able to go back and see the material posted in the, in the discourse threads, or sorry, yeah, in the discourse topics. So same thing here, building a big library of, of modern references that we can use to enable everything above. Let's now move over to talk about the book club. Um, uh, some of the people that have been through the causal inference book club, a lot of this will be review and you, you just know how this works. I see a number of you here doing our great book club thing that we did the last, uh, uh, that we did last year. Uh, but for the folks that are new, I want to give you a good overview of how this works. So you feel comfortable, you know, uh, you know where things are particularly so you don't feel too shy to interact and are happy to chat with everyone here. So the first thing, this book club is super heavy on application and code. Um, I'm going to point this out very bluntly uh, because I'll say Kevin's books uh, in the state space model literature in general is very good. Uh, it is filled with uh, many derivations in math. This is absolutely necessary. We need these derivations. We need these fundamentals to be correct. But in this book club, we, I, in particular, am not going to focus too much on deriving things by hand and a lot of mathematics. I'm going to focus a lot on uh, Dynamax itself, the code, and how we use state-space models. There is nothing wrong with talking again about theory and code, and I 
when I talk about what you can contribute, I if you're a researcher, if that's what you want to do, if that's your focus, make it your focus. Own that. It would balance this book club and it would be so awesome. So uh, please bring that to the book club. For me, though, learning by coding is how I learn best. In my jobs, I get paid to inform decisions and deploy production systems, and I think Dynamax is awesome. So you're going to see that from the live streams. We're also going to reuse a successful format from the Causal Inference Book Club. So the way the Causal Inference Book Club worked, I want to point out, it is async first. I know right now we're on a synchronous live stream, but it is being recorded because there are people that are all over the globe, they're busy. Uh, we want to make this available asynchronously primarily. So anybody can come in at any time and get the majority of the benefit or all the benefit um, without having to be stuck to a strict time schedule. That being said, it's async on a broader schedule. What we usually do is we take uh, two to four weeks to read and interact over discourse. So. Um, over the coming weeks, I'll talk about this more, we're going to go over the fundamentals of state space models. Um, the book club set live session then gets announced about, let's say, 10 to 7 days before the next session, and then we do another live session. Um, so during that time, we read through the books, we chat on discourse, all of our fun async stuff. Then we usually do a synchronous uh, session. So we do one, it's usually a one hour live stream on Sundays. I've been doing them at 8 a.m. Um, but it's not fixed. We can do the synchronous session whenever it works for folks. We can move them to different days. Maybe we can do two synchronous sessions, whatever. But the point being is we, a synchronous session is nice because uh, we get together like this. We get to have a little bit of interaction, which I think adds a lot of fun and flavor. I see questions coming in through the chat. Um, it's nice to be together at the same time. Now, it's not always just me chatting one way through this webcam. Um, I Last time we had folks like Chad and Julio, they led sessions. So everyone here should actually just thank Chad and Julio uh, for leading sessions last time. They put together really great tutorials and um, chapter overviews. Um, on different chapters of the um, of the book club, and it wasn't even just them chatting one way. We had a, a software where we were able to get into the same room, the same virtual room, um, and have a, a more informal discussion uh, between ourselves. So it's not always this type of format. The synchronous session can be all sorts of stuff. Uh, the last thing that we did in the last book club was we brought on guests. So at one point we had. Dimitri uh, Panenos, who is a practicing statistician uh, at Zapier, and he came in and talked about how he was looking at causal inference at work. Dimitri has a PhD in statistics, so he's very trained in stats, and it was still interesting talking to him, uh, learning about, even with all that statistics knowledge he had, how he was looking to apply this at work. And the last session, which I thought was quite fun, is we had, um, we had the author, Scott Cunningham, come on. so. It was great to do an interview with him, learn more from the experts in the fields, the, one, the ones that are making the material that we are learning. Point being, these synchronous sessions uh, can be many things. If you have anything you'd like to do in a synchronous session, let me know and we will do our best to uh, enable that. And the last is it's anything else that you want. So really it's, maybe I'm just setting a we go and you folks are going to learn that I'm very Bayesian, but uh, I'll set maybe the, the median or like the mode of this book club. This is what we do most of the time, but there's a whole distribution of ways to learn and people and ways they want to learn. So if you want to do uh, anything else, please just propose it in discourse. We'll make this our book club. This isn't necessarily my book club. So what each of us can bring. Um, these are the things that I can do uh, with, with my time and with my what I have available to me. Uh, setting the pacing and chunking the material, such as the schedule and topics as I'm doing now, uh, helped a lot in the last book club and I'm going to continue to do that. I'll run these live discussions every couple weeks or so, so I'll turn on this live stream, chat to you all. 
And then in these, in the next sessions, um, in let's say the ones where we're going through the material, I'm gonna be walking through lots of code in application. It's all gonna be backed by math, but my primary focus in this particular book club is gonna be a notebook club, as we'll talk about, uh, going through the Dynamics examples. I saw a question coming through the chat from Chuck. Will there be data sets for the applications? And yes, there will certainly be data sets for these, um, for, the sorry, for the applications. To answer the question that's one step broader, um, we're certainly gonna use the data sets that are already provided by um, the authors and the, in the, the Dynamax library. So the ones that exist, we'll definitely gonna go through those because they're there. Um, but I'm also hoping that we can go through other data sets, ones that either aren't in the book or are generated or are completely new. So um, when we get to like linear Gaussian state-based models and we wanna do, let's say time series forecasting or things like that, we just find some time series data set from somewhere and we build the code on top of that. And then I'm gonna do my best to share my personal experience. I think a number of you, uh, at least in the last book club and even this one seem to be interested in how I'm applying these things, where it lands in my work. Um, and so if you ever have any questions about that, you feel free to ask me any questions about about me or any of anything, I really wouldn't mind. Things you folks can do, um, again, it shouldn't just be all me. It's much more interesting and useful and better if we all do this together. Uh, let me turn my webcam off. One is follow along, just be, show up. I mean, a lot of life is just coming to things and showing up is more than 50% from what I hear from quotes. So just come to come, read the stuff, be a part of it. Um, but then if you wanna be more active, Share with the community. Um, some of you are asking questions already now in the discourse, or sorry, in the YouTube chat, which I appreciate. You're already sharing with the community. You're sharing what you'd like to learn and what you're looking for, and that helps a lot. Just asking questions helps navigate what would work best for people and what would be useful for you. So if you come in and all you do is ask questions, that is super encouraged. I actually really appreciate that. For others in the Cause and Inference Book Club, they never showed up to a live stream ever, but they came in and they shared PDFs. Um, Neil Fultz in particular was sharing this uh, causal inference hot topics thread and he would post new papers and research that was being done in causal inference and it is a fantastic thread. It is a reference that I use now and I'm hoping we're gonna see the same thing here. Folks coming in, sharing in case studies, other books, other resources, things like that. We talked about open source um, and making contributions. I really hope a lot of you folks make contributions to Dynamax. I certainly, I'm gonna continue making contributions to Dynamax. Building out this core library is gonna be good. Uh, it'll help the maintainers. It's gonna help everybody that comes along after you. So code contributions are great. Also helps your resume, I'll point out. I'm just gonna bluntly say, if you show that you've contributed code to open source libraries, people tend to think, you know, people know, actually, you don't even have to think, they know you know what you're doing. And as I mentioned before, the, the biggest lift in the most work, but it's very appreciated is leading sessions. So like I said, Chad and Julio, they entirely took on um, two chapters in the causal inference book club from Scott Cunningham's book. And they just, they, they built the slideshow. They let, they drove the presentation. They made that week happen. Uh, it was fantastic. I re I learned a lot because they brought in stuff that I wouldn't have found. Um, and both of them had said that it helped them learn the material more. So if you really want to, dive into this book club, just tell me you want to lead a chapter and or a session on anything and we will we will make it happen. I want to say these aren't this isn't like future hopes. A lot of you have already have already gone in and you are making this you're already doing stuff. So uh, Mr. Undert here already submitted the some um, some instructions for how to install Jackson Windows, and he merged that into the uh, the repo, so everybody has that. I super appreciate that. And then same thing here with uh, Charlie. I uh, things like this. I want to point out, I don't have a Windows computer at all. I would have, I wouldn't be able to write these instructions, or I wouldn't know the challenges because I personally don't own a, a Windows computer anymore. So this is an example of you folks coming in and providing your perspective to help everyone out there. 
I really appreciate that because a lot of folks use Windows um, and there is now help for them on how to get the code working. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, really, thank you. So with that out of the way, let's talk about our, our rough session outline. Um, session zero, I should say, is today. It's going us going through the book club. Um, the upcoming sessions will roughly be in, in this order. And so some of this is clear, some of this is gonna be, uh, is a little bit more fuzzy, but it actually ties back to some of the questions I see from the chat. Uh, Alexandros asks, are there any prerequisites to follow the club? Um, so I'm gonna answer in two different ways. The easy answer is, is no, there are no prerequisites to follow along with the club because uh, one way and actually still an important way to go through this club is just to learn what state space models are are all about so if you just show up these state space model clubs and you just learn more about um the intuition behind state space models uh some of the diagrams potentially and where this is useful that is totally fine you don't need a mathematics background for that you just have to be curious about the way to th uh, think about the world and the way to model the world and in that sense there's no prerequisite to, to take on this club. Um, and I want to still stress that it is a completely useful and valid way to work through this club. Um, speaking about my own experience, I've worked with folks, let's say, that don't code. We'll call them non-technical. Um, and I, I don't like that word, but it's the best one I come up with off the top of my head. Well, actually, let's call them uh, non-coders or non-data scientists, let's say. But because they understood how these mathematicals work, mathematical models work, or how they're developed, it was so much easier to work with them. So these could be like technical product managers, these could be um, project managers, these could be folks that were in finance. They understood how mathematical models worked, and because they had that understanding, I found it so much easier to work with them, and we got so much farther in the projects that we did. And so if you're one of those folks, you're coming in and you want to work at a you know, maybe a big tech company or another technical company, you're not going to code and you know you're not going to code, but you just want to understand what the coders are doing or the mathematicians are doing or the statisticians are doing. I'm so thrilled that you're here. Um, and to point out and directly answer the question again, then you don't really need any pre prerequisites. You just follow along, learn what this class of models is all about. The second way to answer this question though, is if you'd like to dive deeper into the mathematics and the code, the two things that would help then are um, being able to run code. So under, having an understanding of the Python code environment and specifically the PyData code environment, like loading data and, and data frames, um, making plots and things like that will help. Uh, I'm gonna go through a code tutorial later to help bring that up, but um, that would be one thing that would help you. Uh, and on the mathematics side, uh, this one's a little tougher because there's sort of two ways you could go. If you're really looking to derive state space models and do things like that, which I'm personally not going to do, then um, then having a really good understanding of the theory would be useful. But I'm going to really gear this book club towards um, seeing the math, like identifying the symbols, and then implementing it in code. So in that sense... Uh, if you can read mathematics notation to a, let's say uh, undergraduate level, uh, and then you're able to translate that into code and things like um, distributions, like normal distributions or Gaussian distributions and some st light statistical concepts, let's say undergraduate concepts, those would, uh, those would help as well. But for those prerequisites, um, I'm gonna be going through session one, which is notation in, in theory. So. The next session, I'm going to read through the material myself and I'm going to try and um, establish that base for you all. So we're going to talk about the notation and how to read um, the uh, law of total probability or chain probability. Uh, and we'll talk about um, the notation for normal distributions and I'll show you that in code. And I'm hoping that this first session will build that foundation so then we can then dive into the code itself, like hidden Markov models, and then later on, linear Gaussian state space models and nonlinear Gaussian state space models. 
So Alexandros, I said four answers, three or four answers to your question. Please let me know if I had answered that. And especially please let me know if you have any, um, any concerns. I would say my, the biggest challenge and something that I want to make sure, uh, doesn't happen is that folks get left behind. So, uh, please let me know where you're at or if the material is moving too fast or anything like that. As uh, again, so we can all help each other get to the end goal. It's not a race and this is not a competition or, or anything like that. We're all going to get there together, but, um, let us know how we can give you that helping hand and let us know, uh, where you're coming from. So we can all, you know, come from where we're starting and then get to the same place together. Um, I see a question here about ProbML, TFP. Okay, so I'll get to the coding stuff in a, in a little bit. Let me talk a little bit more about the session structure. Um, so the first two sessions I'm fairly clear on. Uh, I know we're gonna do notation and theory for the next one to build that uh, to build that prerequisite. Oh, let me get back to the window. Sorry, guy, folks, I was talking, not showing you what I needed to show you. The next section will be notation and theory. So we're going to go through the basic theory and notation so you're not lost through specifically the ProbML book and, uh, and the Dynamax code. And then we're going to dive into the Dynamax library. So uh, let me just bring that up to show you what I'm looking at. So this in the causal inference book club, as the name implies, we went chapter to chapter through a book club. So um, we follow the book end to end. In this book club, what we're gonna be doing is going through these things right here. We're gonna be going through these notebooks, which is why I keep calling this a notebook club. We're gonna go from hidden Markov models and we're gonna go through these notebooks here. Then we're gonna go through the linear Gaussian state space models then the nonlinear Gaussian state space models, and then the generalized Gaussian state space models. Um, so we're gonna be following this table of contents as shown here, and actually as shown here as well. And we're gonna be using the Prob ML book as a reference to help us understand what's going on in these notebooks. So the primary material is going to be the Jupyter notebooks in the documentation here. And the secondary material is going to be the um, problem ML book that that um, establishes the fundamentals for everything we see here. I'm going to read through the chat really quick because I think a lot is going on here. Uh, I'm going to pronounce this username terribly, but Wazjini says the problem ML library STS Jax uses dynamics models but provides TFB Bayesian structural time series style specifications and would like to understand the functions in Jax using Dynamax. So Waz Jazzy is, he's giving you a little bit of a spoiler and I wasn't gonna announce it on this book club, but let's, let's just talk about it real quick. The, don't let this distract you too much. Um, it, I, after we get through this, this uh, Dynamax library, we very, very likely are gonna then move on and continue on with the structural time series uh, Jax library as well. So this is a sister library written by Kevin Murphy to the Dynamax library. Um, structural time series are, let's say, an advanced class of models on, that are built on top of um, state space models. For those of us who are in the causal inference book club, structural time series are actually used in um, in causal inference um, types of types of models. So we very likely are going to flip over to this, but let's not. We're not going to get too ahead of ourselves. Um, just keep this in mind uh, for now. We're going to focus on Dynamax and 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 not. Uh, not get too ambitious at the beginning. We'll do Dynamax first, and then we'll probably get to structural time series later. Um, I see Theo says agree. It would be good to explore structural time series, Jax. Yeah, we will. We'll get. I agree too. Let's. You guys forced my hand there, so way ahead of me. Um, Alexandro says you answered my questions, and then uh, uh, there's another question that will we focus on chapter 29 of the state space models book. Okay, so, so you guys have seen, uh, you've seen this material. So now let's go talk about, um, let's go talk about the um, the textbook itself. So let me pull up, uh, this is where you're gonna see me wildly 
uh, go through GitHub and see if I can find my own repo. Oh, uh, github.com. A big component, by the way, of you folks is, uh, is you're gonna, a lot of, these are live sessions, so you're gonna see me try and find material and, uh, and code live, you're gonna see me find things live, so it's not a, it's not like the trains are the, you know, there's a set of rails and we're just going to be going on these, these tracks and we're going to get to the end and there's these checkpoints. Um, towards the end, this, this becomes a much more organic experience where I just start showing you stuff and we've now approached that point. So for those who don't know, Kevin Murphy has released, he had a, he had an original book. I have it somewhere. I don't know where it is right now. He wrote, I think he, he published his initial edition of his book in 2013. It's a wonderful book. If you own it, awesome. And I think that's where uh, the question is coming from. We'll be focusing on chapter 29. Um, but recently, he has, he has now published two books. He was going to write a second edition for his probabilistic uh, uh, machine learning book, which is he calls ProbML. Um, let's see if I can... F f this, was, this was his first book right here. Um, although this now says second edition. Okay, this was his first book, I'm sorry. This was his first book, Machine Learning, A Probabilistic Perspective. Uh, the guy is such such a genius though. Uh, he is decided to write a second edition, but he added so much more material to the second edition that he actually, the second edition now is two books. Um, so what we're gonna be going through specifically, and I've linked it here, and let me throw this link into the chat as well. We're gonna be going through the second book of his second edition, The Advanced Topics. And in particular, we're gonna be going through chapters eight and nine. Ooh. All right, well, I guess I'm not gonna be able to pull it up right now, um, but chapters eight and nine uh, right here cover state-space models. I believe there are other chapters that also cover state-space models, so I'm gonna to have to go through um, his books and find out where those materials are when we get to them. But I definitely looked before and eight and nine are um, match uh, HMMs and linear Gaussian state space models. So get this PDF uh, whenever it comes back online. I don't I don't really know what's going on at the moment, but once it comes back online, uh, get the PDF. We're going to be referring to those things, those things, um, the text written there. When this book is published, I believe it is going to be published uh, like in printed form this year. Uh, I bluntly say buy a copy. So if you can afford it, uh, if you can expense it to your company or you have the means, buy a copy of the book. It's a fantastic reference. It's nice to read on paper and it helps. It certainly helps the publishers and the author keep these things going. So purchase a copy uh, if you can. All right, let's get back to our... Uh, our rails here, which is the presentation. So talking again about this, um, I'm fairly confident on these two. We're gonna cover these two next in the next sessions. The reason you see this X1, X2, X3, Y1, Y2, Y3 is these later chapters, we may wanna split them up. So rather than go through everything at once, I have, I'm have i having a sense, my prior invasion, is that we are probably gonna cover, we're gonna chunk these in two sections because they're, they're quite meaty. There's a lot of content and things going on. Um, so we may have, I'm gonna estimate we're gonna have around 10 to 11 sessions out of this uh, book club, not including the structural time series stuff. Um, so that's what you're seeing here. Um, this will all be posted on Discourse. Uh, the best place to go through everything and to stay involved with this book club is honestly Discourse. Um, I will also be sending out reminder emails and tweets, but really discourse is the place to go. I'll, we're going to have the schedule on there. I'm going to post the announcements on there. The links to everything will be on there. So it's the richest place to go in and stay up to date. Um, just uh, check it every week or so and you'll never miss uh, a notification for a live session and you'll never get lost. To put everything I said into specific bullet points, we'll take extra time and split up the sessions as needed. So we're not rushing. This is not like a rush to get to the end. We're not on a semester schedule, which is something that I always sort of 
really disliked from college, to be quite frank. Um, everything had to fit in this specific, you know, 12 week window or whatever. We're going to take as long as we need to get through this. Uh, the point is to learn it well and to learn it comfortably and to be able to chat with each other. We're not going to sprint and trip and leave people behind to get to the end. Nobody's going to fail this book club. We really want to maximize the chance that everybody succeeds and gets what they want. We will have at least one session a month. Um, we Last time I found that about uh, every two weeks to every four weeks was a comfortable um, time period. I'm going to say uh, this also depends on my schedule. So just whenever I'm able to come on as well, we'll dictate some of this, but we're going to shoot for one session a month. Uh, we may add additional sessions if we want to dive further into particular topics. Uh, so folks that were from the last book club, we really followed the, the book um, chapter to chapter and we had um, a couple of deviations where we had interviews. I'm having a feeling that in this book club, we're going to have more sort of offshoots and branching because there are a lot of topics in state-based models. There's so many and there's so much interesting text that's written out there. We may um, add additional topics to our book club. And then uh, updates will be shared through discourse and email, as I mentioned. I see a ton of things came in through the chat, so let me go through and read those for you folks. Um, there's some about uh, about the models themselves, so I'll read that later. Uh, state six models. Okay, so, uh, well, Josie says there are some papers out there comparing neural nets to simpler state-based models. Well, Josie, I would really, really appreciate if you posted those in the discourse. I haven't seen those papers, but just even sharing those papers and everything that you said right now is the whole reason I do this club. I did not realize that, but I did not realize these papers existed. But now that you told me, I've learned something new. You guys are seeing, or you folks are seeing uh, this learning happen in practice. Um, my ask is when we share links, again, share them on the discourse. The, the chat is uh, great, but it's very temporary and fleeting. The discourse is much more permanent. Um, and over time, you folks will see more and more material built up in the discourse. All right. It's a perfect time now to do the community tour. Um, there's a couple different bits of technology that we use. And it, I found it helpful to show folks where things are so they're not, uh, they're not lost. For those of you who have been a part of this book club, this will be review. But for those of you who have not, let's go through them. So what we have here is the, um, is the discourse. It's at community.intuitivebase.com. I will put that in the chat if you guys have not seen that. Um, it is part of an, the Intuitive Bayes umbrella. I won't explain too much about Intuitive Bayes right now, but essentially Intuitive Bayes uh, is, these, is, a, is a company that I run um, that teaches statistical uh, material. Uh, the nice part about it, that being a company is it pays the bills for this discourse, which is a little expensive. So I can use the company's discourse or my company's discourse to have the book clubs. So. Uh, you folks won't see some of these. You won't see the introductory course or advanced regression unless you've purchased those courses. That's not the focus of this book club. But the point being is that you will see the causal influence book club and you will see the Dynamax, uh, uh, you will see the Dynamax uh, categories here. So we're going through the causal influence book club because it's a little bit more interesting because we've gone through the causal influence book club is... Uh, course on live stream everything takes twice as long to load than uh than usual let's try again all right got it this time in the causal inference book club you'll see all of our various chapters and just uh things that we were chatting about and uh you really will get a sense of everything that we've covered throughout the book club um People are in here sharing um, hot topics. So these were, this was Neil that I talked about earlier. He was, he just comes in here and he posts papers about the latest things that are happening in causal inference and tweets and just things that are occurring. Just nice to have these additional references. In here we posted, um, our, I posted when we're gonna be doing different live streams. Or in this case, this was Chad's live stream. He did differences and differences. Um, they were just, 
questions about differences in difference estimation. And just through all this, we were able to share and learn uh, and create, like I said, a community, share updates and uh, build this library of references that I actually am still using uh, to this day. And I'm probably gonna use the rest of my career to be quite frank with you. It's really nice to have a kind of a one-stop shop for a lot of these blog posts and tweets and things like that, that we've seen on the internet. Um, the causal inference book club is still open. So if you have topics about causal inference, you want to post in there, please do go ahead and do that. Uh, but largely I imagine a lot of you folks are going to be in the Dynamax topic. So come in here, post, uh, whatever you want about the state space model book club. I hope we get the papers posted here shortly after this live stream. Uh, and I see there's even replies that I haven't, uh, seen yet. So here we are helping each other out. This is the, probably I'd say the primary part of the community. Um, what I would appreciate too, is if you folks come in here and introduce yourselves, it's quite nice to know who's a part of the book club, where we're all coming from. It's just better when we do things together. So please come in and, uh, share what you have about yourself. And then the last thing, which is a new feature of discourse is this chat. So if you folks want to type in quicker messages or you have, want to just uh, have something that doesn't quite feel like it to be a whole long discussion or just want to, you know, throw a quick idea out there, go ahead, use the chat. Um, it works like any other chat that's out there. I'm sure you folks will figure it out. But those are the three primary places on this discourse. The other place, as we had, uh, as I had shown, but now I've got to find again, is um, is at least my GitHub. So um, let me pull that up. System book club. Let's see if I can find it. All right, because this is a very code heavy. Uh, a very, very code heavy book club and largely a notebook book club. I will be posting what um, my learnings and code and snippets and everything like that in this particular uh, repository. I encourage you to create your own repository or fork this repository and make pull requests. Um, if you'd like, a couple of folks have already uh, done that and it just makes it easy now to know how to install, let's say the, um, the environment in windows or wherever it may be. So you're going to see interactions on, uh, both of these things. And of course the last place is YouTube. Uh, I won't share links to the channel because you folks are already here, but we're going to put all the synchronous sessions, um, in this particular channel and a playlist. So you can refer to them at any time. That's our whirlwind community tour. So let's talk about things you can do, uh, quite immediately. So the first I'd say is write down what your goals are. Uh, this is my own personal experience learning through the years and just frankly, just statistics knowledge. Uh, when you have objective, when you have problems that have objective functions, um, it's way easier to find what you're looking for. So you can, there, you can do random searches. That's a perfectly valid statistical search. Uh, there are a number of algorithms that are essentially random searches, but, um, when you know where you're going, and you have just even just a little bit amount of information about where you're going, you are much um, much more likely and likely to find what you're looking for. Um, this is a, a kind of an aside, but uh, it, if you're if uh, if you look up grid if you look up uh, point search algorithms or grid search algorithms uh, in traditional computer science, you'll find that random search is one of the worst performers. Um, but if you have things like a star search, which just has a tiny bit of information, and that is the distance from where the point you're at to the point that you're attempting to go to, they're so much faster and way more efficient than random search uh, algorithms. So think through what you're looking for from this club, whether it be, you want to, you know, you want to make new friends, you want to learn what companies are applying status models. You want to learn to write more code, or you're just honestly, you're just looking to find papers on state space models. Uh, if you know that you're much more likely to achieve that outcome than if you don't. And if you write it down from what I hear, um, you really, you really commit yourself to doing it. Oh, I, uh, let me, looks like I jumped out. Let me full screen this again. Okay. 
Join the communities. We just talked about these, the GitHub and the Discourse. That'll be uh, big ones. That's where a lot of our folks will be interacting. Set up the code environments. We'll talk about this in a second, but we're gonna run a lot of code. So if you run, if you set up a local environment and you get these things running, you're gonna be much more easily able to interact and keep up with what we're doing. Uh, and importantly, you're gonna be able to hands-on apply these things yourself. You will be able to run the code and reinforce your own learning by doing it on your own. So I'd say that. And then uh, share with others. So if you're gonna write down goals, post them on Discourse. I'm gonna write down my goals uh, explicitly in Discourse and we can start a goals thread uh, right after this live stream. Um, I realized I haven't, I didn't explicitly write them down in a shareable format, so I will lead by example there. Um, and then if you want to spread the word about the book club itself, I, a number of you folks seem to have shared it with your friends. So it's more fun when we learn together, go ahead and share this with whoever you'd like. So with that, that's the, that's the bulk of like the, I don't know, let's say the plan portion or the, the slideshow. Um, at this point at the end of the book club, we usually have an open discussion or Q and a that today I'm, depending on whether folks want, I will also then do a live tutorial on how to install things. I think I'll do it anyway, because I said I would. Um, so the first thing is, please let me know if you'd like me to continue on and you're interested in the, the live show of uh, how to install the code environment and get these things running. That's one. But uh, are there any other questions and comments or anything like that while I read through what's going on at the moment? Share those comments and questions, and let me go through them. Uh, let me go through the ones that have been posted at the right now. So Luke had mentioned, as I looked at my second screen, um, you'd referenced a thing from Chuck. Are they superior? Okay, are state-based models superior to neural networks in certain applications? Uh, Luke says it depends on your, on your application and the mindset for modeling. They don't prefer, perform well. Um, for time series where models are typically applied, neural networks don't perform well. XGBoost, which is uh, not a neural network, but a, a, a gradient boosted decision tree, um, don't offer explainability that parametric modeling provides. I've used state states models for time series and sensing problems, which we encountered to model uh, SARS-CoV-2 RNA recovered from wastewater. So this is my sense as well. And, uh, um, not even my sense. This is why I'm learning state-based models. Uh, the particular type of decision analysis and statistics that I do in work uh, has small data sets, one-time decisions that usually can't be reversed very easily uh, and are very expensive. So I... Um, oh, and I'm usually not doing classification, honestly. So I'm usually informing decisions from prior data. Uh, things like image generation or classification through XGBoost or neural networks, um, even predictions from neural networks don't work too well for me because either the model can't be trained on the amount of data that I have, or I really need to understand the model failure points, or this is an important one. I have information about the world and I know, uh, the state or the space of the world, you know, as we're getting into state-based models, um, that I can use to make the model better. So I'm particularly interested in learning state-based models because I'm almost certain, like 99% like certain, they're gonna work better in my applications because I have sh small short-run data. Um, I wanna be able to make causal claims in particular um, scenarios. Uh, I have state space representations of the world. Like I understand the dynamics in my world and I want to be able to model those. Um, for all those reasons, neural net, these will be better for me um, than neural networks can provide, both from a mathematical um, ability standpoint, let's say, like the ability to even estimate parameters to a explainability and usability standpoint in the type of work that I do day to day. This is not to say neural networks are not useful. I wanna make that disclaimer. I think there are many situations where neural network type models can perform, do perform really well. They do things that cannot be done with state-based models. But for me in particular, I need 
state-based models uh, representations um, in the data sets and context that I am in. Um, Stefan says, I agree with Luke, state-based models, uh, the nice thing about state-based models is that you can directly model the data generating processes and understand what's going on. Uh, I agree with you fully. Um, let's see, I addressed some of these comments and then uh, Girish asks, can you share a few examples of these one-time decisions? Yeah, I'm happy to. So let me let me pull up my my beautiful picture of a rocket because this is where this is where I um, really got into Bayesian stats, which is why we're here in the first place. Uh, so here's Falcon Heavy. Uh, turns out um, when you read a lot about statistics, a common thing that comes up, let's say, is A/B testing. And I'm uh, in A/B testing, you deploy like five versions of a website. Uh, and you know you see which version works best. That's that would be an A B C D E test. All right. Uh, turns out you can't really do that with rockets. You can't just like launch five random rockets with small permutations and then see which one happens to make it to space. Uh, super expensive. Would take forever. Does not work very well. So a one-time decision, for example, is uh, which. I didn't. I wasn't exactly responsible for this at SpaceX, but I was responsible for this at NOV. Was like which manufacturing process um, should we use to get a part to make uh, either this drill ship or this rocket? Uh, you don't want to A/B test a drill ship and have it explode. It doesn't work out well. I will bluntly say that the oil rig explosion that most famously Deepwater Horizon was not an NOV oil rig, but you, you want to make these decisions correctly the first time because the consequences and the cost of making these decisions poorly of which supplier to use, what manufacturing process to use, um, uh, whether to, I can't really talk about the ones that I do in other contexts, but it's at least in manufacturing, you don't want to get them wrong. So you need, you can't do the traditional, like try a, get a thousand random samples, like launch a thousand rockets and see what the failure is, um, or, um, you can't just ignore prior information. Like you can't just say, we don't know anything about the world and we're just going to like randomly search and figure out what's going on, um, type of analyses. So that was a long way of saying is that I need models that are both explainable, um, to be able to say we should make, we should buy this piece of machinery that this rocket probably won't explode, that this oil rig will be safe for people to use, uh, in both Bayesian statistics um, causal inference, which was our last book club and state space models are ways to inform decisions of that particular, um, particular type. These are, again, I want to point out very different than the, let's classify a bunch of images, uh, or let's randomly test website permutations to see which one has the best lift, which is, I, I don't want to say overly represented in data science, but I feel like when you, when you read about data science, you typically come across these models, uh, models first. Um, I actually, okay, shameless self-promotion. You're going to see many times for me throughout my book club, but, um, I wrote a, in my book, I wrote a, a, about a couple of these. So one is making a decision to switch from, um, from one, uh, airline model to the next, let's say. So the example here, which is very similar to something that occurred in my previous past life is you have a, a contract structure with a particular organization and they want to change the contract to another thing. Um, it's really hard and takes a long time and lawyers are expensive to change contracts. You can't really AB test contract contractual um, obligations with uh, different organizations you're working with. So, um, but you do have to pay for things, right? Like you have to pay for the parts you buy or the service that somebody's providing or any number of things that companies pay for. So given a particular history of interactions with an organization and things that you've paid for, um, does it make sense for your organization to sign a different contract, uh, different contract terms? And this is a, a Bayesian example of if you're an airline, uh, one way you could approach informing a contractual, um, a legal contract signing situation with a third party. So this is one example. Another example I have is much more based in my mechanical engineering space, which is, um, 
you typically don't want the aircraft you're on to explode or break or crash. It's not a not a great functionality of aircraft that you're on. So um, how can you make a decision about the stress or strength of the aircraft that you're on, whether it's going to fail or whether it's going to actually fly? Um, and this is another example of like a one-time decision thing, right? You really don't want to A-B test airplane materials. You don't want to fly a thousand airplanes and have 900 of them explode for you to understand which hundred don't explode. Like you really just want to get it right. Ideally the first time, definitely probably by the fifth time. Um, so you're not paying for a bunch of aircrafts and risking a bunch of people's lives. So those are my two examples, Girish. If you want me to talk about them further, I'm happy to do another live stream, but I hope that answered your question about the types of decisions. Alexandros, regarding the books, I bought a physical one, but I noticed it uses PyMC3. The code is PyMC4. Is there going to be changes? Okay, so uh, I think Alexandros is asking about my book, um, which is uh, the one that you're seeing right here. Um, so let me answer my book, although I'll point out my book is not going to be used in our live stream. Like, I'm just, we're not going to go through my book as part of this book club. This, my book uses PyMC3, which is a, uh, an older version of PyMC, a newer version of the book. There's a newer version of the software, PyMC, at this point, V5. Um, maybe in the future, I will upgrade my book. But that does behoove a question about what we are going to be doing in the state space model book club. So uh, in that book club, Kevin Murphy has written it um, relatively recently, which is one reason, I, which is a big reason I wanna cover it now. It just got published, so all the code in it is very fresh. It's very new. It's using um, the latest versions of almost everything. So he his book covers a variety of, of software packages. Um, he's because his book is quite comprehensive, and in particular, uh, it's covering Dynamax probably closer to as it's written right now because Dynamax also just got published a couple months ago. I think honestly, I think it was less than six weeks ago that this got uh, fully published to the world. So we are gonna be using, um, we're gonna be using relatively new code versions of everything, but it also, this this is another reason I wanna point out um, of why we wanna use local code environments. Uh, local code environments will facilitate your learning um, by letting you use whatever software you want, not just the latest version of the software. All right, so Alexander is in Girish. I think I got your questions. Girish says, thanks, that was helpful. So looks like success there. Um, there are no other questions as of right now. So let me jump back to the last bit of the presentation. Um, typically, this is where we would end our, uh, our book clubs. We try and make them about an hour. I think I'm a little over. I don't see a timer right now. Um, but uh, typically we would end the book clubs. Oh, we're about an hour and 15. So we would end the book club right now. So I want to say if there are no other questions, uh, that about does it for the open discussion. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually record myself installing a local code environment, whether folks are going to stay on or not. Uh, the code environment is such an important part of this book club. I just want to ensure that everybody has their a chance to see um, how to run the code, how to get it running on their computer and everything like that. And also the collab. Um, let me know if you're going to stick around for that. So I, I'd be good to know if I should keep interacting with the chat. And then also let me know if you have any additional questions. So um, I'm going to try and do two things at once. I'll do the local code environment and I'll also answer questions at the same time. Uh, everyone feeling good about that plan? Does anybody want to talk about anything else, any other topics before I launch into that mode? While this is going, uh, one, again, awkward piece of technology, I have to wait about eight to 10 seconds before when, what I say gets to you. So this is gonna be maybe the first situation where you're gonna see me pause and wait for responses before I rush on into the new into a new topic. So exciting stuff. Uh, Theo says they're gonna he's gonna drop out. Great, they're gonna drop out. Okay, 
I think we're good. Sounds good. Uh, let's pull up a f my full window and let's talk through um, installing a code environment. So to install a code environment for this club, uh, you're going to be using a couple of different both platforms and technologies locally. The first one is is GitHub. So GitHub, as the name implies, it's it's a hub for Git, a version control technology. For those not familiar, uh, Git is a whole topic in and of itself. But for now, if you're not familiar, think about um, Git as the place where code can be stored. Um, while I'm talking about that, Alexandros asks, uh, does the advanced topics book assume we've read the previous ones? Uh, I think, I don't know because I haven't read the full advanced topics book, but I'm, I'm confident we're going to be able to pull out enough material of what we need from both books to um, teach this particular book club. For those who don't know about Kevin Murphy's, uh, Kevin Murphy's texts, uh, he writes about a lot of topics in his book. It's actually why it's such a good reference. It's probably the best reference. Um, he covers many types of models, many types of thinking, all sorts of things, st uh, statistics. So what we're going to try and do is slice out the relevant bits about state space models. Uh, we want, we're not going to do an end to end reading of his textbooks that would take you honestly, literally years at this, at our rate, we're going to, um, focus on Dynamax, use what we need from the advanced topics books, and then pull out what we need from the historical book. All right. Love the question. That's keeping me on my toes. Alexandros, let me know if I got your question. I'm going to hop back to code. So what you can do is, um, you, if you have Git on your computer, uh, oops. if you have Git on your computer, you can clone this repository, which I'll show you how to do in a second. But otherwise you can just click download with a zip and uh, extract the files. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clone the repository. Uh, you copy this thing, uh, you go to wherever, whatever repository you want. Let me, show, oops, my window's covering it. Let me make this bigger. Um, and then you type in git clone. And then you, paste the name. Oh. all right, this is where live demos don't work out well because this particular VM looks like it is out of space. I should have checked that beforehand. <laughs> All right, what I might do is I might flip over to my uh, my personal computer then. Um, all right, let's just jump over to my personal computer. We're gonna shut off this uh, this VM. Oh, let me close that. Um, all right, we are now on my personal device, my actual computer. So we're gonna do the same thing, CD repos. Uh, let me turn on my capture card. I have to get the link again. So, uh, Dynamax, copy this. I might already have Dynamax on here. So LS crap. I don't. Okay. So what we can do is we can go in here, we can create, um, we can clone the library, which would be, be good to get all the, the code and everything on here like that. And what happens now is uh, I can get to my Dynamax repository and if I hit Thunder dot, which in my case opens up just the same, the same repository here, the Dynamax. Um, I can go in Dynamax and then here I have, um, all of my, all of the, the note, uh, sorry, docs. And then here I have all of the notebooks that we're going to be going through. So that's the way you get in and you, um, get the code that we're going to be running, um, as part of this book club or this notebook club. We're going to be the first chapter. We're going to be going through these things, the casino models and the Gaussian hidden Markov models. The challenge is, is because these are notebooks, they're not really fun to read through with an editor. They look like this when you open them in a JSON form. So we need to be able to run the code. 
The way to do that is you need to install a local uh, a local environment. Um, and the local environment has a whole bunch of, of stuff in there. So what I had done is um, we're going to flip over to my repo now. What I have done for this book club is I've created an, a fixed environment for, for us. So I've put in all the stuff that uh, I think we're going to need. The reason I'm using my own environment and for this book club is we, we want to um, probably go, th we're likely going to use more libraries than what's needed just for Dynamax. So it's good to just be able to uh, have our own environment that we can freeze or change or move around. And if we start with our own environment, it becomes much simpler to then um, control what we want and what we want in it. So I'm using a particular piece of software called uh, Miniconda. This is what's called a um, an environment manager. It also, in Conda is also a, a package manager. Let's ignore the package manager side and just focus on the environment management. But what that means is you can have, uh, and I'll show you in my, I'll show you in my code environment, uh, my uh, my virtual computer. You can have a bunch of different um, environments on your computer. So Conda env list. So here I have three uh, three environments. I have a base environment, a Bambi live stream environment for when I did a Bambi live stream, and then I also have uh, a GitHub issue environment that I used for something else. Uh, this window is a little not great. Let me make this a little bigger. So here I have three environments. Um, on my personal computer, I have a lot of environments and I'm not gonna show them all to you because they're quite embarrassing and there's so many things going on. But um, what we do, um, let me see if I can free up a little bit of space for you folks. Mm -mm. So what I'm doing is I'm actually uninstalling an environment first to see if I can free up a bit of space to install an environment with you folks. Let's uh, make it a little better there. So what's happening here is I have a uh, mini conda right here. I have this software installed on my local computer. It's managing my environments. And now I am going to be removing, uh, in this case, I'm removing one environment to try and make some space. But in your case, you'll be using, uh, you'll be using Miniconda to install an environment and you'll be using these commands here. Using these commands will install Miniconda and uh, on your particular computer. Um, let's see if this works, if this, uh, if this will work out for us. If not, okay, we got a little bit of space, that's good. So cloning Dynamax, we'll let this go. Actually, we don't need Dynamax, I'm sorry. Let me clone my repository. So to install the environment, you're gonna clone another repository, which is mine here. All right, and then you will go in, uh, because I have Linux, I can just do this, copy this command, run it. Um, oh, I have to get into the, get into here. Uh, sorry, I'm all over the place. All right, SSM book club. There we go. You run this command and it'll start, uh, it'll start understanding the packages that are being used. It'll start um, determining what they are. And in, in this case, I should have cleared the RAM, uh, the uh, space in my computer, but it'll go ahead and it'll install the environment. So please just go ahead and uh, give it a try. If you run into any challenges, uh, just post in the discourse and we'll be there to help you get this going.
Point out, you don't have to use Conda. You can use whatever environment management software you use. So if you're an advanced user of Python and you use Poetry or PipM or virtual environment, or if you use Docker or any one of these other tools, all perfectly valid. Use what works for you. Just get the code on your computer and running so we can run through the code together. The other thing I can show you though, which is a, a great part of, uh, of this, is that you can run these from Colab. Um, so let's do the second part of the demo. If you would like, you don't have to install a local environment. You can go in here and you can go to Google Colab. You just type in, uh, type in Google Colab. And you go to file. Uh, well, also the fun of live, uh, live demos. Okay, file, open notebook, GitHub, type in the, the repository. Let's see if we can get this to run. Okay. You type in the repository and you, um, um, the repository link, and then you can go in here and you can open any one of the notebooks. So we can go ahead and we can click on, on this, and now this will open the logistic regression uh, demonstration. So now we have the code the code here. And in this case, Kevin Murphy and the team are already so nice that they, um, that they set it up so we can run and this will automatically go through install Dynamax, uh, pull the code in and all of that. So it's in, it's nice because you don't have to install anything locally. It does mean though that you won't be able to make contributions or modify the, um, the source library or anything like that, but it's a perfectly valid way of also coming through and going through the book club. So, if you can, I would suggest a local install. It's how you'll be running code yourself, likely in a company, and it's the most hands-on, and it's the most um, you're in control method uh, of running running things. You can use your own GPU and all of that. But uh, if you also like to use Colab, uh, you certainly can do that as well. You'll likely see me in this book club flipping back and forth depending on what's appropriate. So that is the way to get the code running for this book club. Thank you for sitting through another 15 minutes of me uh, talking through uh, all of this. Uh, so with the last couple minutes here, any questions on code installation or, or anything else before we close out this first session? We have to wait the, uh, the couple of last seconds for the stream to catch up. All right, going once, going twice. Looks like we uh, we have no further questions. So that will conclude the first session of our states-based model book club. Really appreciate, again, you folks showing up here and being a part of this. Uh, the next session will be announced on Discourse. Likely it'll be early February. Um, Chad asks, is there a post with all the resources for the book club? I don't think there are. So let me go ahead. I need to create um, my goals post. And I also need to create that post with all the resources. I will do that right after this live stream. Um, no other questions. Looks like we're good here. You folks know where to find me now. You know the community channels. Ping me anytime. I'm looking forward to our next session uh, early February. All right, folks. Enjoy your Sundays.